Hey guys, what's up? Bisectatron here from One Hive Gazette. Here with the Q&A video that I told you guys was coming out. Part of the 5,000 subscriber celebration. One to answer all your guys' questions and also give the results uh, for the new survey. So you'll see the results for the new survey at the end of this. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the questions first. And uh, I tried to take as many questions as I could. I think I got almost all of them. I'm going to be a little bit of a longer video because I took so many, but I want to make sure that uh, for the 5,000 subscriber celebration uh, that I can answer almost all your guys' questions. So uh, hopefully you see it in here. If not, uh, there's always next time uh, because I do these about every month or so, some, sometimes more. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get to the questions. I'm sorry if you hear a little bit of a clicking sound because I do have to go uh, navigate along and open up these questions. Uh, so anyway. We're starting with uh, you do uh, I'm not even gonna try it with that, but uh, thanks for the question. Uh, he actually has two questions, and first is why aren't you an elder or a co-leader? And then the second is do the leaders in One Hive Genesis know slash accept that you aren't 18 yet? Uh, as far as the elder co-leader thing, I've been in Genesis for uh, maybe like eight, nine months. I'm not, not sure exactly how long, probably about eight months, uh, maybe a little bit shorter. I've been in the One Hive family for eight months, maybe like six or seven months in Genesis, but uh, it just comes with time and uh, taking on responsibilities. I'm obviously very busy uh, with the channel, and also I'm busy with just stuff in uh, my life outside of Clash of Clans and YouTube, so that's uh, something that kind of takes away from me being able to be fully... Uh, involved in everything that's going on, but I do uh, do some ba build, uh, base building responsibilities, so I think it comes with time, but uh, part of the, the reason is I'm probably not as active as a lot of people who get the uh, elder and co-leader rank, because it's given to people who are doing stuff for the clan, who are reliable, and uh, who are very uh, productive in, in management and stuff, and I'm just not quite there yet. So anyway, uh, the second question to answer that, uh, I think... Yeah, they know I'm 18. I mean, I'm in high school, obviously, so uh, I guess you could be 18 your senior year for like the last part of it, but uh, I'm 17, and I think that it's not that strict of a rule. They just want uh, maturity, and uh, they're not going to enforce it too tight. Uh, 18's kind of the what, what you should shoot for, what you should be about, but if you're one year under that, I don't think they care too much, as long as you don't you know show it too much. And uh, I think it's no big deal, but yeah, they know, and I think they're cool with it. So anyway, uh, thanks for the question. Moving right along here, we have uh, Voiceless Yeti, who asks, uh, when and why did you join OneHive? I might have answered this before in a previous Q&A, but just to quickly say, uh, I had been watching some of the OneHive YouTube, mainly Jake's channel for a while. Uh, this is about, starting about, I don't even know at this point, uh, September of 2015, September 2014 maybe, I don't even know, but I had been watching that for a while and then I applied to One Hive about six months after uh, when, I had a, when I was in between clans, got rejected because my heroes were too low, then went ahead and uh, applied again and uh, got accepted in the fall of 2015 and now here we are like eight, nine months later. So. Uh, that's pretty much it. One to be in a high level war clan, and uh, One Hive is kind of considered one of the top uh, fair play war clans, which is why I wanted to join the family. Okay, uh, next question is from Odie Fatboy Amino, and he asks How do you feel about OHG and OHA separating from the One Hive family? Honestly, I don't think it affects day to day life too much. I, I mean, the only kind of thing we would really do is exchange players for arranged wars. And uh, even now, we still have a lot of Town Hall 11s and Town Hall 10s uh, and Town Hall 8s, Town Hall 9s, obviously, uh, to uh, to go to draw from within uh, the Alpha Genesis family. So I, really, it's not affecting a whole lot because we still have a lot of people, a lot of different levels for arranged wars. And other than that, I mean... There wasn't a whole lot going on between clans, uh, besides maybe a social event, a scrimmage every once in a while. So uh, I'm I'm somewhat indifferent. Uh, 
obviously I had to kind of come to the defense of Genesis when they uh, were leaving out our side of the story in uh, their video about them separating from us. So as long as you know everyone knows what's ha what happened in a transparent way, I really no don't care too much about it and it hasn't affected me too much. So uh, no hard feelings towards them and I'm feeling great about Genesis and Alpha going forward. Okay, Armando Martinez Jr. Question, on average, how long do you take to plan out your attacks before a first hit or cleanup? Um, I would say it takes me, for Town Hall 10 at this point, uh, I come up with the initial plan, like the outline, okay, this is what I want to do, and it might take five minutes to come up with the, uh, the very basic outline of what I want to do. From there, assuming other people think it's cool and I'm good to go, I get it checked off by someone else who like thinks the idea is good. Um, finalizing things might take another 10 minutes uh, and then maybe another five on kind of practicing, going through in my head, uh, kind of just, you know, visualizing it. And uh, so 20 minutes total, I think, goes into planning an attack. Obviously, it's going to take longer in a ranged war. And if it's like a really garbage base, it'll take quicker but um, on average, maybe 20 minutes for Town Hall 10. And it probably was shorter when I was at Town Hall 9. Okay, did I answer all parts of that question? Oh, prefer first hit or cleanup? Yeah, that's what I'm missing. I prefer uh, first hit because there's that element of doubt. You don't know what's gonna happen, and uh, I think it makes it more interesting. You don't have to spend as much time planning out every little bit because a lot of it's gonna be kind of improv, and I think it's cool to be able to have to adapt uh, during the attack. And this one's from Inflamed Elite TM War Recaps. Question, will you quit Clash of Clans if they ruin the game again? I think you're referring to a little while back when the communication was bad and uh, there was some balancing problems. And uh, I wouldn't call that ruining the game, but I think I know what you're saying. And yeah, I'm going to quit at some point. Everyone will. Uh, the game will not be around at some point also. And I think that I'm already a little bored with farming. It's not much fun. I kind of do it begrudgingly. Uh, so, you know, it's not a lot of fun to farm. But the decrease in the troop time helps a little bit. <clears throat> and uh, I think as long as war is interesting, I'll stay in the game. And I'm definitely having fun in war right now at Town Hall 10, trying to pull off the three stars. So uh, for right now, at least, I'm enjoying the game. And I don't see myself quitting anytime soon. But inev inevitably, it will happen. Uh, we'll see when, but I don't see it coming anytime soon. And uh, even if the game goes through with kind of a dark time, like it did a little while back, uh, I don't think that would necessarily make me quit, but uh, it depends on the extent to which that happens. So uh, we'll see, but I think you're safe for now. Safe for now. Okay, uh, Yannick Theophil, Q&A. I have a great clan, and we're just under 200 clan war wins, but we are not that... Uh, we don't have that many high-level players. We are getting more and more. But how do we develop into a real uh, war clan? Like, for example, the One Hive clans. Right now, we are a small, uh, good community, but it is necessary to change the rules and stuff like that to become bigger. And uh, also, uh, okay, to become a bigger and also better clan war clan, which is also known, so we have matchups, etc. Can you give me some tips? Okay, a little bit hard to... Uh, dig through that one a lot of layers to that but uh, I kind of get what you're saying and for a clan that's not really well known uh, and doesn't have many high level players like you said uh, I would say get involved on the uh, FPC whatever Bindle group I don't, I don't know they have various different ways of communication I think Bindle is one of them there's also a website forum stuff like that uh, but get involved with other fair play clans, getting in arranged wars, and that way uh, other clans in the community will get to know you, and that way other players will, will get to know you. It might be kind of hard to match if you're not that high level, but uh, do what you can. I mean, there's lots of Town Hall 8 and Town Hall 9 high level war clans that will be willing to match you. So I would just recommend that. Get yourself out there. Get maybe a YouTube channel if you can. Start getting a little bit of a grasp in the public domain and then from there you should get a few players applying uh, as far as changing the rules it, it's up to you you know the clans whatever you want it to be I wouldn't change the rules just to try to attract players 
uh, keep it true to what your clan is and what kind of uh, things you're looking for in the clan. Okay, uh, next question is Brandon Kwan. Q&A, when did you start getting into the war community and what kinds of clans were you in before joining the One High family? So, okay, so I started Clash of Clans maybe almost three years ago. Uh, it'll be th three years in July. And uh, I didn't start really getting into the war community until I saw people like Jake and Hulk, who was some of the uh, first war YouTubers. And I saw started watching their channel about a year later after I started playing. So we're talking now summer to fall of 2014. And uh, even, even after seeing some of that, I still kind of would swap between trying to join a uh, before clan wars came out I would well trying to join a good trophy push clan because that was the thing before war came out once war came out uh, and though I started watching those channels I would still try to join like a good high level clan then I'd go back and start joining a friend's clan start my own clan just kind of hop all around uh, towards a little bit later on I kind of started to stay in clans longer uh, either a friend's clan or uh, a clan I would join because it was high level, was good at war, etc. And uh, from there, it just, you know, decided that I wanted to apply to One Hive. I was in a clan for about six months straight, which was a long time for me before One Hive. Uh, but I've been in a ton of clans, and uh, even as I got into the war community, I was never really fully involved until uh, probably about a few months leading up to One Hive when I really decided that I wanted to take it to the next level. And that's kind of reflected on the YouTube channel as you watch the attacks. It's um, pretty quickly it becomes war oriented. I think I deleted some of the videos I made a while back about farming and stuff. So uh, that transformation kind of happened midway through, and yeah, from there just uh, is history. Part of One Hive for the last little while, like I said. So glad to be here. Um, next question is from Code Noah Quig. Uh, what AP exams did you take during this week? Hope they went well. Uh, well, for those of you guys that care, I guess, uh, I had four. Uh, calculus, Lit, AP US History, and uh, Capstone. So uh, I'm only in three classes. I'm not in Lit. I just took the test. But uh, yeah, I, I have a lot of uh, school stuff that I do because I'm in these classes and uh, it's a bit of a commitment pair that with clubs and sports it's a lot so uh, I'm just lucky that I have the time to do this especially moving forward now that a lot of that stuff's over and the classes are kind of winding down I can uh, have some more free time to do this but uh, yeah they went great uh, thanks for asking and uh, yeah I think they went pretty well okay uh, moving along long question here I'll do my best um, okay, Q and A question. I'm the best attacker of my clan. I'm actually the only one who masters hybrid attacks as a Town Hall Eight. But we're now a level six clan, and some of our Town Hall Eights are now fresh Town Hall Nines. And now every time we win three or four uh, wars in a row, we find that a clan with uh, we find a clan with Town Hall Nines that our Town Hall Nines can't even two star consistently, and our Town Hall Nines are getting two or three starred. I'm tired about these uh, shady attacks. <laughs> yeah, uh, how can I? How can I improve their skills and planning and convince them that to try to try something else other than uh, go wipe? Almost every time I give them advice, they'll say I'll, I'll try and then they don't do it. Uh, by the way, congrats, uh, Nathan. Out, cool. Uh, okay, and uh, I'm not sure if this is a clan with people you know or if it's just a clan you ended up in. And I've been in for a while so uh, the thing is you, you asked like how do you improve their skills and planning you can't improve that for them because they're the ones that, that are attacking so this it comes down to them deciding they want to take the time to develop the skills and to take the time to plan an attack uh, you can you know lead them to water but you can't make them drink so you can recommend you know watching this channel watching other channels uh, you know being familiar with the three-star attacks and using, you know, hogs, valks, combination of them, uh, whatever is going to get the three star on a given base. But if they're just going to stick with go wipe, I think that's a sign that you should move to another clan if you're interested in 
trying to, you know, three star and be a top war player and they're kind of lagging behind a little bit. But yeah, it's always hard to leave a clan, although I think sometimes it's necessary because people just don't want to put the time in to be a serious war player, which is fine. You know, I totally get it. And uh, I think that when that happens, there can be some conflict. But if we keep people in different clans, uh, that way people can be around people who are like minded about the game so they can be around other kind of casual war players. And uh, maybe you want to try to switch to a more uh, serious war clan if that's what you think you want to do, um, assuming you can't convince them. Maybe they will be open to it. I'm not sure, but it sounds like they're not uh, really listening to your advice that well. So uh, anyway, let's keep moving to the next question. Got a few more. Uh, this one is from Dhruv uh, Tripathi, and he asks, uh, need your help to understand if Town Hall... 8.5 and 9.5 are still valid, and uh, what do you recommend for 8.5? So, just kind of what they are, that's kind of what you have to look at first, is 8.5 is basically becoming a Town Hall 9, but not dropping the Expos. Um, you will always want to do offense first, and not, not like don't do defense, but prioritize offense whenever you get to a new Town Hall level. But when you actually become a .5 is when you don't get the new Expos at Town Hall 9, or at Town Hall 10, you don't get the new Inferno Towers. That's how I define it, at least. Uh, because you could say that it would be considered doing offense first, but I think that's pretty much what everyone would do. And it doesn't necessarily mean you're being a point five. You're just kind of taking it uh, faster at offense and trying to prioritize that. But um, it's more of a uh, deliberate decision not to make certain defenses, uh, not to build certain defenses, to make yourself smaller in weight. And uh, that's what point five is. So is it still valid? I think that depends what you describe as valid. It's still a smart thing to do. Uh, it makes it a little bit trickier to match in arranged wars. You guys saw I wasn't in our arranged war uh, because of that matching issue with the point fives. So that was part of uh, the, down, the downside of it. But uh, if you're just doing random wars, I think it makes sense. It gives you uh, a good advantage almost. And uh, as long as you don't take it too far, I think you're okay. I, I would say as long as you're still using your gold to build defenses, if you don't want to build the Infernos or the Expos and the heavier defenses, that's fine. So I think it's still a good thing to do. It's still a smart thing to do. I, st I wouldn't take it too far and start you know dumping gold into walls just to waste it because you don't want to build defenses. Uh, I would keep progressing along and uh, get those Infernos down within a, a few months of being a Town Hall 10. I wouldn't delay it too long. My Infernos are going to be going down soon. For an 8.5, I would say uh, I would say Town Hall 8.5 should be shorter than Town Hall 9.5 because it's quicker to upgrade your stuff. So get your Hogs max, get your Balloon max, get your King up a little bit. Uh, once your offense is looking good and uh, you get the new Air Defense, which is probably important, the new Giant Bombs, get those Expos pretty quickly. Start upgrading that stuff. Because uh, I think at Town Hall 9, uh, you want to make it harder for your base to be 3 star a little bit harder at least, and I think that'll help you out a little bit, help your clan out. So I wouldn't stay at Town Hall 8.5 for that long, but uh, for a few weeks to a month, I think it might be worth it. Okay, uh, three questions left. Uh, this one's from Rich. Q&A, do you like chocolate milk? Uh, yes. Okay, moving along, we have another one from Nathan. Uh, nice attacks Q and A question. Do you think, uh, do you think that Supercell should add some clan levels to add some com uh, competitivity? Is that a word? Competitivity. Uh, because right now, uh, many clans are town or level ten. It doesn't really mean something to me anymore to me. So, yeah, I see what you're saying. A lot of clans are becoming level ten. And then once clans get there, it's kind of like everyone's clumping up at 10. Uh, and obviously, there's still a lot of clans that aren't 10. I mean, I'm not trying to sound like I'm in this little bubble or, you know, in our community, all the clans are 10, which isn't true. A lot of high-level war clans still aren't 10. And in the, you know, vast sea of clans that do war, the vast, vast majority is still not level 10. So it's still that progression, but people are starting to reach 10. And uh, I'd say new levels would be kind of cool. I would think that they could add some more stuff you can do once you're, you know, level 5, level 10, 
have some way to customize how your CC looks. Just make it cool, make it, you know, you're able to customize a little bit more once you get that level. Make it mean a little bit more besides just the clan perks. Uh, but yeah, maybe up to 15, that'd be cool. I don't want them to waste too much time on it. I don't think it's that much of a priority, but if it's an easy thing to add, uh, sure, why not? That'd be kind of cool. And the last question of this video is from, again, Kanoa Quig. Uh, a few of you guys double dipped, which is cool. Uh, I didn't even notice it when I was picking the questions, but here we go. Uh, he asks for the last question, I'm a Town Hall 9, about to go to Town Hall 10. Would it be more valuable to build two level 1 Infernos right away, which would make it extremely hard to 3-star me, or extremely a lot harder to 3-star me, and build no extra defenses, or go 9.5 and get... Uh, that probably means wrecked. It probably got uh, uh, auto-corrected. Yeah, and get wrecked during war. Thanks. Yeah, that's something I thought about. And uh, here's the thing. Assuming the matchmaking system is, uh, or the match itself is clean, uh, which sometimes it's not, it might go either way a little bit. But if you build the Infernos, you're going to get matched with someone who has Infernos. And because offense isn't weighted as much in the matchmaking algorithm, the person you get matched with is going to have Infernos. And uh, if they decided to be a 9.5 for a little while, which is a very high chance in the high, in the war community, the high level war community, if you're going against a good war clan, they're probably gonna have pretty solid offense. And if you're a new Town Hall 10 that still has uh, Town Hall 9 level troops, then you are going against a person who has equal defense level but better offense. Whereas if you stay a 9.5, worst case scenario, you go against someone like yourself who's also has kind of Town Hall 10-ish level uh, troops, but Town Hall 9 defense for the most part. So uh, in the best case scenario, you just get a Town Hall 9 matched with you. So is it cheating the system? It's kind of a fine line or a blurry line, however you want to say it where it goes from you know taking advantage of the system to playing it smart. But I think there's nothing wrong with being a 9.5 for a little while because it, it is a big disadvantage if you go against it, uh, especially if there's only like three or four Town Hall 10s in your clan and uh, you're drawing an extra Town Hall 10 because you have the Infernos in the match, but you don't have the troops to be able to, to have any chance of three-starring that Town Hall 10. You're at a disadvantage because that Town Hall 10 will probably have Town Hall 10 offense uh, if they were, you know, uh, shrewd and, and kind of crafty about how they upgraded and they did the 9.5 thing. So I would stay 9.5 at least for a little while. It's your choice, but maybe uh, get your Valks done, get, uh, you know, the free spell up a little bit, maybe the hogs, and then from there it's your choice. So anyway, uh, thanks for the question. All right, now it's time for the uh, results of the new series voting. Uh, as you guys know, I went ahead and asked for uh, what series you guys want to see on the channel just to make up your own series, and uh, you guys sent in your responses. I picked the top three that were the most common uh, type of idea that I saw, and uh, once again, those three, just to go over them, were the uh, what I think Jake calls the Hitchhiker uh, series of videos, where I visit a clan, show the attacks, you know, talk about the clan, give answers to some of my questions and uh, just kind of have a video dedicated to a clan and its attacks um, from the war community. The next one was to show unusual attack strategies that you don't see very often but still are effective. And the final one was to show a compilation of failed attacks and then talk about why they failed for different reasons and have a few of those in the video. So anyway, those were the three uh, options and uh, you guys voted. 187 votes total actually. We're, we're cast, and uh, here are the results. I'm gonna go ahead and throw them up. Uh, three, two, one, boom. There they are. Uh, so you can see it was ridiculously close. Uh, 33%, 29, basically 30%. So the top one and then the bottom one are within, what is that, 6% uh, of each other. So it's, or, no, 7% of each other. So it's just crazy how close this was. And uh, it really left me thinking, like, what am I gonna really do at this point? Because, uh, I, you know, I, I was thinking there would be kind of a clear winner, uh, but there wasn't, and uh, it's hard to say, okay, like, 
you know, 60% of people uh, didn't actually vote for this series, but now I'm going to start it. Uh, so I was kind of debating what I'm going to do here, and uh, I am going to honor the top voted series, which is the uh, Visiting the War Clans, uh, your guys' clans, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'll have a video coming out on how to apply to uh, have your clan checked out by me, and uh, that'll be coming out soon. So uh, I know there's going to be a lot of people that want to get involved in this, so I'll let you guys know, and hopefully that'll be up and running pretty soon so I can start getting those videos out every once in a while. Uh, for the other two, I was I was really debating what I'm going to do here because it was, was so close, and I think these are two series that people definitely want to see. So if I ever want to, you know, add a new series because, you know, every once in a while an old one will kind of fade out, won't be eat, done much anymore, and uh, then maybe a new series will come in and replace it, or I'll just add a new series to the channel like I'm doing here. So these are two good ideas that I'll have, and uh, maybe in the future I'll let you guys vote in another one. But for now, unfortunately, those two are going to have to wait. You'll still see, you know, the failed attacks and the base destruction videos, and you'll still see the unusual attacks and the recaps or just any kind of special video I put out on them. So uh, it's not like you're not going to completely see any of what that what that would involve. Just uh, I'm not going to start a series of those things, unfortunately, right now. But anyway, uh, thanks for voting, guys. Very close. So every vote mattered at this point. I think... I think I did the math at one point. It would have taken, well, probably would have taken about <clears throat> for the second place finisher to be first, which would be a 3% difference. Uh, what would that be? It would take like maybe six votes, and it would be the top uh, voted series, and it would be the one I would have to choose. So anyway, thanks for the votes, guys. They really mattered in this case. And uh, yeah, I'll be coming out with how to apply for the new series soon with a video so stay tuned for that anyway though thanks for watching uh thanks once again for 5,000 subscribers this came a little ways after i uh, actually reached 5,000, but oh well uh you know uh not too late never too late to celebrate the 5,000 uh mark so uh hopefully get up to 10,000 and be able to do even more fun stuff there uh but i'm really loving seeing how the channel is growing so thanks for that. I'll see you guys later though. Thanks for watching this extra long Q&A video by Sectatron out.